Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Shotgun Galahad. So the Galahad equipped with the Storm and Gust weapons. So I have uh, two of those uh, loaded up uh, in my lineup. You know, I figured I have two maxed out Galahads, might as well. See how well we uh, do with that. And I have a Natasha with uh, Tempest Molots. And I'm trying to remember what else I have. Um, a Balkazari with Turans. Just looking to see what these guys are in back there. This is a domination mode, so we don't have to really worry about them spawning in. Um, you know, right at this beacon here. Just trying to see if I can take this guy out. At least do some damage to him. I'm going to be reloading here soon, so I can't uh, go in. So the thing with the Galahad, the shotgun Galahad, it's just like all the other shotgun builds. You have to get very close to your opponent if you want to do uh, any kind of significant damage uh, to them. Let's see if I can perhaps hit that uh, griffin back there. I actually don't mind if I get taken out here because I really don't want to be uh, in this build. I know there are a lot of players out there who may be asking themselves, you know, why are you going out into the open there with your Natasha? You could do more damage. It's not really about doing damage. Um, you know, you've got to make sure that you cover your beacons. And that, to me, is actually more important. It's hoping that my last shot might be able to take uh, that player out. But uh, let's go ahead and let's drop in with my first Galahad. So I decided to, um, you know, put two of these in, as I said, because I do have uh, two maxed out Galahads from back when the Galahad used to be the meta. Figured, might as well run to you. I have enough Storm, have enough uh, Gust weapons for this. None of my uh, Gust weapons are Mark II. Uh, my Storms are. So, I mean, there's that to factor in as well. But here's the deal, though. When running um, a build like this, other than getting very close to your opponent, um, in Champion League, players generally tend to run a lot of Orkins, you know, a lot of Turans. Uh, there's a Shock Train as well. But I think the biggest problem for uh, such a build as this is more the fact that a lot of players run Orkins. It's the Orkins that uh, can definitely ruin your day. Um, because with Orkins, the Galahad cannot block Orkins. Before you could outrun it, uh, this was a while back when we had you know, the whole outrunning of Orkins uh, glitch, which it was a glitch, it wasn't actually part of the game like many uh, think it was. Um, before you could do that, now you can't. So if you're out into the open or within that 300 meter range, uh, you could get hit by Orkins and there's actually no way to avoid it. So I'm waiting here for these guys to fire the Orkins and see if I can perhaps go in when he doesn't have any Orkins left uh, to go in and dish that damage uh, both to his shield He's actually still taking damage here. You can see uh, the bullet spread. And I'm going to try and knock down uh, that Hitchy's a shield as well. So that when he engages, you know, my teammate, he doesn't have any... I'm waiting for this guy to fire all his Orkins here first. Now I'm going to go in and do this damage. <laughs> he had a buddy here to help him. But you can see what I mean. You know, when you're facing um, players with a lot of Orkins, you're not going to get very far with such a build. There might be cases where uh, you might get lucky. Uh, like you saw with the, the Rhino when I waited for him to fire all his Orkins. I think that's the best approach. If you can wait uh, before attacking, uh, that will help a lot. So you can see here from 350 meters, I'm not really doing that much damage uh, to that player. Gotta watch for this player here. He's actually firing at someone else. So I'm gonna go in and just start firing. I'm not even bothering to put my shield up because at this point uh, you're going to be taking splash anyways so there we go I was able to take out that bulk Azari and uh, there is another player here I'm not sure what he's in but if he's up top there he may be in an inquisitor or something uh, let's move uh, to the right side here see if I can help my uh, teammates out get that beacon back I'm gonna run sideways I may get killed by Orkins here so the nice thing about the Galahad is that you can block uh, things like Tehran's, uh, Trebuchets, uh, Zeus, even Shock Trains, uh, provided you know, it doesn't bounce off a teammate. So you can definitely block that, which is nice. I'm trying to see if maybe I can knock this guy's uh, shield down. Where's this guy in? I 
I actually want to go over the hill there, but I got to be careful of this guy here to the side. And we've got shock trains going across. I'm not sure if that's from my teammate or if that's from uh, the other player. But uh, here we go. So I'm hitting this guy from 290. You can see how much damage I'm doing. Not a lot of damage. Uh, if you compare this to the amount of damage that I was doing when I was actually in the tunnel hitting that Balkazari, uh, I was doing a lot more damage. So that's, you know, the thing. You can do a lot of damage provided you can get close. Um, the Galahad doesn't really have that much speed. Uh, you do have a physical shield, so if you can get close to uh, maybe someone who is in like trebuchets, it might help. So you always have that. Try to see if I can perhaps push through this side here, take out this player. And uh, maybe this guy as well. I need to get behind cover here though. Ooh. Taking on a lot of damage. But we do have an Inquisitor here, so I think that's going to be able to help uh, at least take this guy out. go and I only have uh, one more bot left after this so hopefully we are able to pull off with a win uh, looks like the other team has already lost one player either that or they haven't dropped in yet and it looks like we are getting quite a few beacons here so that's good news let's see if I can perhaps push down through center my my thinking is if this guy up top uh, moves away from center I might be able to help my teammate get into center capture this beacon and put a uh, more beacon pressure onto the other team but otherwise my second uh, Galahad actually had a pretty decent uh, run but what I'm gonna do is uh, at the end of this game I'm going to run another game and uh, hopefully we can get a different map um, I think the um, the shotgun Galahad might actually do well on a map like power plant so hopefully we can get uh, that map beacon rush perhaps I think that will help a lot so yeah, it looks like we've got five beacons, or it was five beacons for a bit there. I think that's going to help uh, to drive down their beacon bar, but this is a four versus three game. Actually, four versus four here. So uh, this might be this might be a very close game, actually. Oh, jeez. Trying to see. Someone was hitting me back there with... Yeah, they got shock trains, and they got uh, pins into Lambus or something back there. So i got to make sure that I don't attack that side. Gonna see if I can perhaps put some uh, pressure here on uh, this beacon so that we get that. I'm actually gonna fire everything here just to reset. They do have a player, I'm looking to see. So that's a Lancelot back there. I think he's gonna go for our right beacon. Trying to move across here so I can get a little bit of a height advantage uh, in the event that they come around the corner there. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, that's how we did. Uh, not too high in terms of damage, as you can see. Um, I needed to actually get very close in order to do that damage. But I think it was a very good demonstration, um, especially in the tunnel, where I was able to uh, take out that Balkazari. But also when the Griffin, um, you know, up top, when he jumped away, you could see how much damage I was doing. I think at about 250, 300 meters. So uh, you can see the amount of damage output um, close versus uh, further away. You always want to get at least 100 meters, I would say. Uh, the closer, the better. And uh, on a large open map, um, I think a lot of players are going to struggle with the uh, shotgun Galahad. But on a smaller map like Power Plant, uh, Moon Map, I can definitely see the potential to do a lot of damage provided the other team doesn't have a lot of Orkins. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and let's see if we can run another game. Uh, maybe a different map, maybe Power Plant map uh, to see if we can get some better footage of the shotgun Galahad. Okay, so game number two, I dropped in on Valley Map. Uh, this game is going to have some uh, post commentary here because what actually ended up happening was I was recording my uh, live commentary and I got a call, uh, I think from a telemarketer midway through, so it kind of ruined uh, all my live commentary. Uh, the game itself, however, was very good in terms of showcasing the shotgun Galahad, so I decided to keep it and just do commentary over it. Uh, anyways, in terms of commentary for the actual game, uh, you saw that we didn't have the right beacon um, secure. So I decided to actually sacrifice my uh, Balkazari in order to get it. Uh, being that they did have a Fury Zeus back there, I was able to block. Um, someone was firing at me from behind, so I turned around. I figured, you know what, he probably watches my videos on YouTube. 
So a uh, shout out to them. Uh, I think they were just trying to get my attention. But anyways, uh, being that I only have half HP at this point, I knew they had a Fury Zeus, I knew they had a Balkazari with Shock Trains, I decided to actually aggressively push uh, this right beacon in the hopes of getting it, but unfortunately the uh, Lancelot was able to take me out. Um, at this point, what I was doing was I was trying to uh, see, you know, what was the other team running. I saw a Stalker, I knew they had the Lancelot, I know they have a Fury Zeus and a Balkazari with Shock Trains, so they have some range and I decided at this point to drop in with my Natasha with Tempest and Molots. So what you're going to see me do now is I'm going to try wither down that play on the right side uh, in the Lancelot. Uh, but my main focus is really the uh, Fury Zeus uh, around the center area who is uh, kind of covering there, peeking his head over the uh, hill and firing. Um, I'm trying to see if I can bait him out really, uh, sticking within the 590, 600 meter mark. Generally, Furies who have that 600 meter range, they will go out into the open and they'll try to actually hit you. So I'm trying to bait him out and trying to hit him uh, that way. And of course, uh, helping out my teammates. Um, at this point, you know, I could see kind of how he was playing and he wasn't really going to get aggressive. So I decided to actually get aggressive with my Natasha. So you start seeing me uh, play my Natasha more aggressively because I'm trying to transition out of this bot. And a lot of players have asked me, you know, why do you play your range um, so aggressively um, on some maps? Uh, because I could sit back and get more damage if I play it conservatively. Um, the reality though is, at least on iOS, a lot of players in Champion League tend to play a lot more aggressively than you think. Um, being that they play more aggressively, they actually manage to advance on you a lot quicker. And if they're advancing a lot quicker on you, they are able to capture your beacons, um, you know, whether it be center beacon or your side beacons, um, a lot quicker than you would like. And if it was beacon rush, you'd have a problem. Uh, thankfully for me, this is domination mode, so I didn't really have to worry about that. But you can see here I'm playing my uh, Natasha aggressively on the right side, trying to take out that uh, Fury. Um, at this point, I actually saw that they had another Fury uh, with Tempest, which I managed to uh, take out. And you'll see now what I mean. Uh, that player that was in that Fury Zeus, he killed his bot in order to defend this beacon because he realized uh, that we were capturing uh, you know the side beacon so you can see the reason why I played aggressively is because of that very reason so anyways I got taken out at this point I kind of looked to see what they were running in I decided to drop in with my shotgun uh, Galahad and uh, this is when I got hit briefly by a scourge I put up my shield because I can block it and I try to wither down this player and another thing too you'll see that same player I think uh, made a move on our right side so you can see how aggressive um, champion league players generally are you know they go for beacons uh, but overall i think they're a lot more aggressive and i'm not sure if it's just on ios or if it's the same on android but uh, definitely on ios and champion league you'll find that um, but anyways yeah i was at center here and i think this is when i actually got a phone call so there's going to be a part where i clip out here and uh, anyways, uh, back to uh, this now. So you saw I took quite a bit of damage. And at this point, I decided to actually uh, move towards center. I figured, you know what, I'm almost dead. I might as well go for the beacon. Uh, there was this Inquisitor which landed in front of me. I tried to get a couple of shots off on him before I got taken out. Um, again, I spawn in with my second shotgun Galahad now. And this is the one that actually ended up doing really well for me. So I'm trying to scan to see... Um, you know what range the other players are in I decided to move uh, towards the center area here so I put up my shield and at this point I did see a player at center I wasn't sure what he was in he didn't have much health so I decided to actually aggressively push uh, towards the center here in the hopes of actually clipping him on the side in order to take him out while I was in center trying to get this beacon I noticed this Lancelot, so I was hitting the uh, Ancelot here. He didn't really turn at me, and I think this was a bit of a mistake, because he figured he still has to get through my shield, but that's when I was able to uh, help take him out. And at this point, this is where I decided to use this ramp here as a shield. And one thing that you know I really do like about the Galahad is all the weapons being on the side. So you can see here, how I'm trying to wither down this Balkazari and uh, staying behind cover and the same thing with this one here you can see the range I'm at I'm close to that 50 meter mark and that's when these weapons start doing a lot of damage 
So I'm using the ramp, using cover, using my uh, corner shooting ability, waiting to load up you know, all my weapons here so I can uh, deal that uh, crazy damage from up close. And again, you know, that Balkazari back there, he's moving back. I'm trying to see where he is. I'm trying to wither him down bit by bit. And again, I'm waiting for this other Balkazari here to make a move. So, um, you know, he wasn't making a move. I decided to move a little bit uh, closer to him. And this is where you can kind of see the amount of damage that I'm doing to him uh, and his shield. My shield got blown off, but look at the amount of damage I'm doing from about 50 60 meters so yeah he was taken out and again you know I, I decided to knock down this guy's shield and then get behind cover because I did see um, an inquisitor and I know that the inquisitor was most likely gonna jump so I tried to hide uh, in between the wall and the ramp hide behind cover and uh, give my weapons enough time to reload and I was waiting for this uh, inquisitor to get out of his stealth and that's when I hit him. You can see how much damage I'm doing at uh, around about the 60, 70 meter mark. And I'm doing the same thing here to, uh, you know, those landslots uh, back there. And again, I'm getting behind cover, hiding behind uh, the ramp here so that I can uh, get my weapons loaded up and I can do that damage uh, using my corner shooting ability, uh, having all the weapons on the side. So I'm just playing, you know, cover, giving myself enough time for my weapons to load up in order to do that damage and uh, just playing very patiently with it so I just wanted to show this uh, clip here because it shows or at least highlights you know the potential of this bot to do a lot of damage provided you are close but uh, anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed consider subscribing until the next video I'll catch you guys later